qui va parler, le premier la personne qui va parler, c'est Coach Eric. Comme il a dit, il a été sur le staff pour 20 ans. Et comme il a dit, il est ici pour 20 ans dans le staff. And has traveled to many international countries, <coughs> including 13 African countries. Okay, I feel like I should say Nelson Eric, USA. <laughs> uh, good morning, good morning. Oh, we are all humbled. We're humbled by you being here. I, I woke up this morning with great gratitude um, that this is happening again. Because it's been three years since we have been able to assemble like this. But, but thanks to Megan and many others, we assembled on Zoom as well, didn't we? So uh, I'd like to just find out, maybe we'll just have a little competition for a moment. Um, I want you to, you can either write it down or you can record it in your head. From the time you got to your airport in your, when you left your city to the time you arrived in the U.S. at the airport, how many, how many hours was it? I'll, I'll give you just 30 seconds. How many hours was it? Okay, 10 seconds here. Get your number. Okay, raise your hand if it was more than... 20 hours, more than 20, more than 20, okay, more, keep it up, keep it up, if it was more than 22, 24, 27, 27, how many? 32. 27. Congratulations. 32 hours. Hey, at the same. 36. Oh. Wait. The big question is who's your travel agent? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 36. Oh, wow. Uh, how, ma how many layovers? How, how many stops? How many stops? Okay, well, uh, this morning... Uh, we will have an introductory uh, topic that uh, it's our hope and it's my hope that this becomes a part of your uh, action items or your takeaways when you leave. So let's just consider this the start of a conversation. Uh, 
I believe you have maybe places for notes in your notebook or however you take notes. Um, so uh, what, what I'd like to do is just give you a brief introduction of Athletes in Action, why we exist. And talk about transformational leadership. Athletes in Action has been an organization for 56 years. And this is what we are purposed to do. I, I can give you some of these slides later if you don't want to write all of it down. But. But we focus on developing athletes and coaches I tell you what, you can actually just go ahead and translate to, go ahead and translate or you can read it, maybe easier. So, you focus on developing the athletes, the coaches, as leaders, as players, as on the ground, on the terrain. Their beat is to see the athletes and the coaches living in the sand, the puissance of the legacy, and for the team, and then in the sport, and in all the nations. So, just a question for you to think about. What would sport? or basketball look like in your country if this was true? Jacques, what would it look like if this was true in Rwanda? Right, right. People are working together. So in many countries, information is power and not used for the good of the sport. So our encouragement is for you to consider how what you learn here could help this be a reality in your country. These types of gatherings could happen in your country, in your region. I ask more questions than I make statements, so I'll just ask you one more question. How would competition be affected if individual character became important again? One of the most well-known coaches, who's heard of John Wooden? Anyone? Raise your hand. Okay, a few. At one time, he was considered um, the greatest team coach of all time. Ten championships in 12 years. 
Il a gagné euh, 10, 10 tournois, 10 trophées en, en 12 ans. In December, in December, Athletes in Action is going to build a gymnasium, indoor gymnasium, out here with four courts. It's, it's named after John Wooden, the John Wooden Family Fieldhouse. So one of these years, you'll bring your coaches and your players for training. So we, we pay attention to things he said because he was a wise man. If you would you, you need to translate this or you okay? Yeah. Uh, so so please consider with the uh, character, please get the invitation. Because the character is what it is. And when the invitation is what it is, what the others think of you. So we must understand, though. That much of this starts with the coach, the power of the coach. It was said by a very, a very uh, respected uh, pastor, religious man in the U.S., one of the most respected, that the coach has more influence than anybody in society. And yet, I think this is an interesting statistic. Who works with children under U18? Under U18. How many of you work with children? Okay. Um, these are statistics from the U.S. And many children are stopping play because of certain reasons. I'm not having fun, grades, injuries, categories. Bobby, is any of this true in your country? So we have a unique responsibility to meet people where they are. It's a problem. So, we believe, I believe, that this is what starts with you. You as the leader. You as the leader. I think you might have thought you come here, you came here just for basketball, but I, but many times, you'll discover a different reason why you came So let's talk about how you can become the kind of coach, transformational leader. A transformational leader can lead themselves well and they lead others. Okay. 
What is the difference in a transformational leader versus a transactional leader? We've all played basketball or worked with transactional leaders. Transactional coaches treat you like a Kleenex. They take you out. They use it for their purposes. And when it's not worth using anymore, what do they do? They throw it away. Raise your hand if this happens in your country. Okay. Well, it happens in every country. <laughs> so, what kind of leader can you become to where you're transformational? Are you a credible servant leader? Do they trust your person? Are you followable? I think the 12 that followed Jesus knew something about him. They trusted his person. Do they trust your person? If they trust your person, then they trust your role. Make sure you understand that. If they trust your person, if you are the same person, in all situations, they can trust your person. So the goals for this session this morning are, what does it mean to become the kind of person that can be trusted or be transforma and be transformational? Let me just pause. Are you, is the translation going okay? Is it coming okay? Is Ba too loud? Is it, is it okay? Are you doing all right? <laughs> Maybe uh, go from 10 to 8 or 7, okay? Uh, <laughs> hey, you're a coach, athlete, okay. <laughs> um, so listen, it's not about doing the right thing. It's about becoming the kind of person that can do the right thing. Do you understand that? So the transactional leader, we'll just call them the Kleenex coach. The Kleenex coach develops a culture of fear, failure and shame. Winning is the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters. They live their life through the athlete. Meaning, I didn't, ex I didn't get to the level I wanted to, so you better for you. Or when you have success, that means I'm successful. Their identity is tied up in the existence. And when players are of no use anymore, they discard them. Who they are depends on how they do and their success. That's the Kleenex coach. That's the tissue coach, okay? 
but the transformational leader. <clears throat> Winning is not the end goal. <inaudible> Building character, and teamwork, humility, <inaudible> unity. <inaudible> but developing the total athlete <inaudible> is their goal. <inaudible> what is the total athlete? <inaudible> Body, <inaudible> mind, <inaudible> soul, spirit. <inaudible> And we could even say social, like they know how to interact and build community. That's the total athlete. And that's why we exist. Competition is valued. It's honored. They respect their opponents. It's not war. The opponent is not the enemy, but a co-competitor. But they're motivated by something, they're motivated by something different inside. Take one minute to, to write down what motivates you to coach. What motivates you? <coughs> Just one word, two words. Phrase. <clears throat> Mashumba, what motivates you? And keep the motive, Mashumba. Quite a Well, you are Michael Jordan to us. <laughs> so it starts with you. I want you to keep, um, keep in mind what you wrote down. It starts with you. You cannot lead others if you cannot lead yourself. <clears throat> So I'm speaking to myself while, I, while we're sharing today. I'm very convicted by what I'm going to share with you. Because it's very much a, a, a challenge and a work in process. Many times your day is chaos, right? It's chaos. Urgent things. I need this from you. Text messages, emails. It makes it very difficult to be a leader. How do you lead yourself so you can lead other people? Is your cup overflowing or is it empty? Is your cup here where you have very little to give? Or is it 
here or is your cup filled every day in a way that everyone gets what flows out of it? This is the challenge of a leader. But most of you showed up today like this, right? So, so we want to do this for you. Oops! <laughs> but we want to do that, yes, we do want to do that. <clears throat> we want to do that for you. But your challenge is how do you do that at home? So I'm going to very briefly talk about five words there that start with P in the English language. Okay, they may not start with P in French, but so I guess alliteration doesn't work all the time. Um, so um, here you go. Purpose. Why do you do what you do? Why? It's been said by wise people that the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you realized why you were born. Knowing your purpose is really important. The purpose of a coach is to take important people from here to there. <clears throat> because they can't do it themselves, it's your job, Mashumba, to help them get there. What are you doing to revisit, to think about your calling and your purpose? Do you write it on a note card? Put it on your home screen? It's important to define that. So maybe over the academy, you can spend time refining that. So, <clears throat> so I believe in order to become a transformational leader, you must know your purpose. Number two, how do you involve people, people and community in your life? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I just came from Houston yesterday. And the Houston Astros are the world champions in baseball. Is their logo? Yes. Yes. Everyone hates them. They think they still cheat, but they don't. They don't cheat anymore. They did cheat. Well, I guess we don't never really know if they don't cheat. <laughs> Maybe they do, but they won. So the one thing that made them a great team this year, one of the things, <clears throat> is their pitching staff. Uh, the okay. And does anyone know what it's called where all the pitchers sit in, they sit behind the fence in the outfield? Do you know what that's called? Uh, dugout is where the players that are batting, what about the place where they sit? 
bullpen. Bullpen. Yeah. yeah, it's a bullpen. And so the, the, the pitchers, they sit out there and they wait to be called in to throw. Okay? There's eight, eight or nine people. They're really important. Some of those people, they only come in and throw to one, one batter. Some of them are starters. I mean, they, they, they pitch the whole game sometimes. And some of them just for two or three innings for a short period. <clears throat> But a, a manager or a coach has confidence when he knows who is in his bullpen and can trust them. Who is in your bullpen? Who are the people, the people that help you grow? Do you have three or four or five people that help you grow? Because people give us courage. They protect us from our self, our weaknesses. They help us face fear. And they help us experience God's grace. Who is in your bullpen? Maybe you can answer that question over the next 10 days. When life is like this, <laughs> who can I talk to? Do, do you ever feel like that? Do you feel like that? Oh, yes, we all do. Who can I talk to? Mm. Maybe you have a coach for you, a mentor coach. Or some people have consultants, like uh, Ba is my consultant. Ba, I'd like to talk to you about how I can lead practice and relate with my players. I think you should consider all of the AIA staff that are here that were introduced as both coaches, consultants, and counselors. That's why they're here. And sometimes counselors help me understand all of the things on the inside. That sometimes come out when I'm coaching. Early in my coaching career, I had a problem with anger. I couldn't understand why all of a sudden in practice I just got so angry. And I, be, I felt like I was becoming a different person. Oh, I, <laughs> I hated that I hated myself for it. I did not like myself. But I had to have people help me understand why are you so angry? And how can you walk through this? Hmm. Since you're a coach, I know you've never been angry. <laughs> but, but, so I know pe I need people. Need people in my life. Okay. A transformational coach, one that helps people be total athletes, has got to have people in their life.
<laughs> Maybe we should do a breakout on anger management. <laughs> it's too long of an answer, but I'm willing to talk to you about it. Maybe we'll do an anger session. <laughs> Who would like to be a part of an anger management session? Uh, okay. Jacques the only angry one, huh? Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll spend some time. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure. Have some coffee, talk about anger. Uh, it's long. It's a long process. You're right. It's very different. Because when I brought that, who I was, to the women's game, I ended up with crying players. <laughs> So it was a problem. And I thought, why are they crying? Take a break. Take a break. I'm going to take a break. Okay. Number three. Pace. Your pace of life. Do you feel like this? Like the fish swimming upstream? Raise your hand if your day, your day feels like this, where you're just swimming upstream like a fish. Raise your hand. Huh? Okay, many. I feel like that many days. Many days. It's very difficult. But, but this fish has to find, swim upstream until he finds what? A pool of water, uh, away from the running water. Do you find a pool of water to rest, renew? When you have good pace in your life, balance, maybe balance is another word, you're able to reflect and renew your mind. There's a good uh, rhythm of work and rest and fun and laughter and friends. Uh, Coaches can be the worst for overworking. And they pass that on to their players. And then their players say, this is not fun anymore. And they do what? Quit. Pace. We'll talk more maybe another day. On okay. Last two things. Two things. Priorities. <clears throat> do you have, do you know each month or week what your top priorities are? Because if you don't know, who decides them for you? Who, if you don't know what they are, who decides them? The chaos of your world. Your federation, your... And sometimes your federation does help. But... This is really important for you to think about your priorities as a leader. Because if I don't, all I do is react. I'm a react, I react to everything. Rather than respond to people. You may have seen this before. It's from a well-known author where he talks about doing first things first. 
Frère Thierry Sarché, Notaire Gali Le première chose, première. If you notice, this is his suggested allocation of our time. There's two, two columns. There's urgent and not urgent things. And important and not important. Facebook is what? Facebook is what? Oh, very important. Maybe, maybe sometime it is. Not important and not urgent. Facebook. Facebook. Okay. So less than 1% of your time. How much time do you spend on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? How much? Oh. Here's here, here's the reality. The leader, the transformational leader, is able to spend the majority of their time in the important and not urgent things. Oh, that's very convicting. Mm. Just, for, just for right now, write down the percentages that you think you spend in your life. Just right now. Hmm. Take just one more minute. Just the first thing that comes to mind, the percentages that you think you spend. Nick, where is most of your time? Where is most of your time? Nick. Yeah. Urgent. Is it urgent and important or urgent not important? Okay, yeah. All right. Take just 30 seconds. Okay. Raise your hand if you think you spend most of your time, most of your time, in number one. Number one. Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Number two. Number three. Or number four. Okay. So this is worth considering, isn't it? It's worth thinking about. Maybe have a discussion with the people you're with. <clears throat> Are you planning your work or is your work planning you? And what are you, only you, uniquely gifted to do in your current situation? What are you uniquely, Arnold, Big Charles, Henry, Pavi, Viv? What are only you uniquely? created to do? And can you do more of that? Not everybody can do what you're supposed to do. All right. I need to wrap up and finish the last one. The last thing a leader must consider is what lens are they looking through? A 
tissue coach, do they have a long-term or short-term view of life? Short term. What is the short term? Win. Just win today. Okay. And and sometimes to be, to have go from a short term to a long term, it's just a change of perspective. Why am I here? What is my purpose? <clears throat> maybe this, maybe uh, in the next two, two weeks, you will change your perspective. <laughs> Consider the Hubble telescope. This was, uh, one, it was $1.5 billion <laughs> to build. <laughs> A huge project. And when it, when it was launched, it didn't work. The pictures were fuzzy. 1.5 billion dollars and the pictures were fuzzy. They couldn't see the right things. What was the problem? There was a lens that was in a wrong position by one one fiftieth of a hair. One fiftieth of a head of, of a piece of hair. That's how much a lens was off, distorted. That's all it was. They changed the perspective on the lens and they got good pictures. Maybe your lens needs to be adjusted. Mm. Consider that if you will. Mm. Are you a lifelong learner? Who are you learning from? That's part of how we gain perspective. I, I really, I look at Mike Siegfrieds, who has here, been here for 50, 50 years. Okay. Mike is a lifelong learner. He reads, he asks questions, but he has a posture of lifelong learning. And you're here. That's why you're a... So what kind of leader are you becoming? This one? Or this one where your cup is full? Full. <laughs> Which one? Are you becoming? Uh, so, uh, boss man, do you do you want to do any discussion, or do you want to just wrap it up? Uh, pick out one, and we'll go for like. Five. I'll let I'll let them do it. I'm going to wrap up. Okay. Then. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to dismiss you just within your group to have discussion on one of these questions, okay? Let's, uh, let's, we can, if you want to take a picture, take a picture of this and then I'll go back to the next one and you can pick a question. This one, or everybody got it? Or this one? Okay. So why don't you get in groups of three or four and pick a question you'd like to discuss?